Hello everyone, my name is Zenitsu, and I'm back with another Digimon video. So today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different, and this is more of a thought experiment, because recently we got announced that uh, they are going to ban and uh, restrict certain cards, and right now the only two cards that we have uh, getting restricted is uh, going to be Hidden Potential Discovered and Argamon. So just to clear things up, these cards are not banned, you can still play these cards, you just cannot play them in the full quantity that you could before, and both of these cards are being restricted to one. So the reason why both of these cards are being restricted to one is because they both make green a little too fast to go into their megas. So they could potentially go up into their mega for like two to three memory, which a lot of the other decks just cannot do. And just the speed and power that that presents for a color like green definitely is what puts it above and beyond a lot of the other colors in terms of tempo and overall power because it could already be fully formed uh, when the other decks are just starting to get going, and then green having such really good control tools could start limiting what the opponent's options are, and they could really take a hold of the game very, very early on, and very, very efficiently. So both of these cards are hit just to make green a little bit slower, and make seeing these cards a little bit less consistent, so that way it forces green to use other options, but I do think green is still going to be a very powerful color, just because, as I mentioned before, it has just so many other good cards that it could be playing with that uh, it's just going to be slowing the deck down a little bit, but it's not going to outright kill the deck or any of the decks at all. But part of what goes into a ban and restricted announcement is the changes it's going to bring into the meta and what it's going to mean for the color going forward or for the cards going forward. So I really like the fact that they are limiting these cards and not straight up banning them, so that way... Uh, players can still play with them, they're just not going to be as prominent or powerful or build arounds as they once were. And now on to the main meat of the video, which is what I would ban or limit to make it Digimon's meta a little bit more interesting. But looking at everything that we have from BT01 to BT04, and then some of the spoilers in BT05, I definitely don't think there's a lot of cards that really need to be banned or restricted as of right now to have a fun and diverse format, and uh, there's just a couple of cards that I really think it just need to be limited, just to help uh, make uh, the colors and cards that they are playing with a little bit more diverse. Alright, so first card I want to talk about is going to be Anjuwamon. So this Anjuwamon is from BT03, and just a very, very powerful Digimon to be playing around with. So she has two abilities, an inheritable and an innate ability. So her innate ability is a, a when digivolved ability, one of your opponent's Digimon gets a minus two security attack until the end of the opponent's next turn. So this is just a very classic yellow ability where it's just trying to reduce the amount of damage that the opponent is going to be presenting with. So that way you could try to keep your health total into the proper position that you want it to be at. So that ability is totally fine, and that's not the reason why I'm putting this card on this list. Now the real reason why I'm putting this card on the list is because of her inheritable ability. So her inheritable ability is a when attacking ability. If it, your security is 3 or less, then you get to play one level 3 or less Digimon from your hand without paying its cost. So that's just really, really powerful because we have a whole bunch of Digimon that this interacts with and that makes this ability really, really extra powerful. So as we saw in BT04, we have War Greymon, which allows you to basically attack twice. So you get two instances of her ability, so that allows you to put two Digimon out. And then you could also pair this up with in BT05, Crusadermon, and BT02, Magnadromon. So that way they basically have very similar style effects where you just attack and then you get to play a level 3 yellow Digimon for free, and then if you have Anjuwamon in the Inheritable, then you get to play another one for free. So all these cards are doing the same thing where it's just basically spamming bodies uh, onto the board as quickly and powerfully as you possibly can. Some are a little bit better than others. War Greymon's probably the easiest card this card synergizes with, just because he reduces your own security, adds it back to your hand, and then you could trigger the when attacking effect, where then it'll check if you have three, and then you could play another one, and then his multi-attack allows you to do it again, on top of which he has a removal of ability on top of all of that, so he's just obviously the better one to interact with, but the fact that you still have something like Crusadermon, where even though you do have to be at 3 security, it's not super hard for y'all to set itself up to be at 3 security, even without something like the help of War Greymon. 
but the fact that on one swing spamming two bodies is still very, very powerful, and Magnetramon has the same style of effect, but the fact that still one swing two bodies is very, very powerful, especially when level 3 in yellow have already a lot of decent utility and a lot of decent potential. So all of the good level 3s that yellow could be playing around with, that these cards could all just cheat out for free could be something like Bushi Agumon where it has the rush or haste ability where just him coming onto the field being able to swing right away just applies a lot of extra pressure onto the opponent and really could help out close out games and just being able to again cheat him out for free means you ignore the play cost and uh, being able to just uh, spam him just allows you to again just put so much extra pressure onto the opponent where it could just close out games really really fast. And then on top of which, you have cards like Lucimon, where, again, you're ignoring the high play cost, even though he does reduce his own play cost. The fact that you just don't even ever need to worry about his play cost or the reduction doesn't really matter because you have cards to cheat him out for free. And then on top of which, he has a nice on play ability where you get to recover one. And then on top of which, you're left with a 10k body that is a level three that you could cheat out for free and you could cheat out multiple of him for free. So this is just really, really powerful. And those are two of some of the most powerful examples of this, but Yellow still has a whole bunch of other really powerful level 3s that they could be playing around with. So you have a Kudoman, which is from BT04, where he has an on-play ability. You could reduce your own security stack, so that way it keeps you within that 3 threshold, and then you get to minus 2,000 DP on one of your opponent's Digimon. The fact that he could still just uh, stack the removal ability and just uh, be able to delete larger bodies is very, very nice. And then you also have stuff like Salmon, where just a relatively high play cost means you don't necessarily want to play it most of the time, but the when destroyed ability is really, really nice to help it keep your security as healthy as possible, and on top of which, because it's a when destroyed ability, you don't care if it lives or dies, you're just trying to aggress with it, just to trigger its when destroyed ability, just because it has some low DP, so it's not going to win a whole lot of security checks. And then on top of which, if you really need to help keep yourself at that three security threshold, you could play something like Lotmon, where this is basically two cards for one. So just the fact that you could play this for free, and then you get its one played ability where you could look at the top card of your security and then add it to your hand and then draw a card means this card's basically drawing you two cards for this card coming in for free. So that's just really, really powerful. You have the promo Patamon, which has the nice on play ability of uh, basically if your security is one or less, then you get to recover one. So this is probably one of the worst examples that, that I can be pulling from, but it's still a very powerful ability that you could still get out for free. And then you have the new Promo Pulsemon, which this card is absolutely insane to get out for free, because if you're sitting at 3 security, then you're going to be getting both abilities to draw a card and gain a memory, but you're still going to be gaining one memory regardless, just because your security is going to be 3 or less, because most of the time you're going to be trying to trigger Angel Woman's effect. And then you also have something like Starsmon, where if you just have multiple Starsmon that you're playing for free, then you get the nice on play ability where you get a minus 1000 DP for each of the Digimon you have in play. So if you have, uh, let's just say, a uh, Crusadermon, swing once, play two things, both of those things are Starsmon, then you're going to have uh, minus 6000 DP off of both of the Starsmon. And that's still just really, really powerful because uh, you're going to have uh, three Digimon on field just based off of the ability alone. So uh, Angelwoman just facilitates a lot of uh, problematic, like, board spammy, controly gameplay, where it's playing with a very similar style that Green's playing with, where it has both aggro and control options all built into itself, and this card definitely is facilitating a lot of that. And I definitely think uh, reducing Angelwoman to one will definitely help make yellow a little bit more diverse of a color. But she's not only limiting to the level 3s that are being designed, but she's also limiting to the Megas that are being designed, because any Mega with multi-attacking or an attack to play stuff is definitely going to be very, very powerful in combination with her, and she definitely should be limited to one, because that also will free up a whole bunch of deck variety and deck space, because uh, most people will just play a set of ultimates with an ability, and then a set of ultimates without an ability that's going to act more as a tempo tool. So limiting her to one definitely will change up how yellow is going to be building decks, and I definitely think that is going to be for the better because it'll definitely help bring yellow a little bit more in line with some of the other colors, that, on top of which uh, it'll free up a whole bunch of more deck and design space. Next, the second card I kind of want to see uh, limited is going to be Anubismon. So Anubismon is just an absolutely insane card. 
So he has two main abilities. So his first ability is a when Digivolved ability, where you get to play a level 3 Digimon from your trash uh, without paying its cost. So it's kind of doing something very similar to a lot of the other purple cards that, that are resing something, except the big difference is that you do get its on playability and it's not color restricted. So those are two huge aspects on what makes Anubismon's level of res a little bit more powerful than his average contemporaries. But like the fact that uh, he just uh, is a more powerful res effect still makes him very, very, I guess, not really problematic, but worrisome. Just because, again, it limits what level 3 Digimon could do just because Anubismon exists. And then on top of which, he also has another ability where during your turn, when one of your Digimon is played from your trash, those Digimon gain Rush. So not only does he have one of the more powerful res abilities in the game for purple, but he also gives them all rush so that way they can attack right away and uh, create a lot of extra power and pressure onto the opponent. Pseudo out of nowhere, like his ability is supposed to play with himself, but his ability could be utilized in some very, very powerful ways with some very, very powerful cards. You could pair him up with, let's just say, a Metal Gururumon as an example, where the whole idea is that Metal Gururumon will attack, res something, then whatever he reses could attack. You pair Metal Gururumon up with something like Aware Gururumon, where you could sacrifice another Digimon to activate him. is just really, really powerful, because if you just have another Digimon just sitting on the field, then you could attack with that Metal Gururumon, get his attack ability off, play a Digimon, sacrifice the current rested Digimon, and then stand him up, and then swing again, get another res, and then both of those Digimon could then attack again. So just with Metal Gururumon, you could pull off like four to five attacks in a single turn, all because Anubismon is giving those lower level Digimon rush. And then on top of which, you could pull off a very similar combo with uh, Chaos Gallantmon, and then on top of which you have just some basic res cards like you have Mastimon, which just could uh, start chipping away at the opponent's security on top of resing something. And then whatever you res also could attack because of Rush. Again, same type of thing. It's just a lot of pressure and it's a lot of power to be playing around with. You could do a very similar thing with Kreskururumon and his Digiburst ability, except with his Digiburst ability, you could use it multiple times. So... You could just res multiple things and swing right away. And then you could even do some really cheeky stuff with like Millenniumon and other cards that like have self-reviving abilities. So if Millenniumon attacks and manages to get deleted from a security check, let's just say, and then he reses himself off of his own ability. If you just have Anubismon sitting on the field, then he'll have the rush ability also so he could swing again. So Anubismon, again, is just facilitating this a very powerful, like, oh, now purple just has a lot of extra power and aggression out of nowhere. And this could even extend to just even more cards, like uh, the uh, promo Metal Garurumon, uh, Plutomon, and Lilithmon, where you could start utilizing some of the option cards to res stuff. So you get cards in combination with, like, Back for Revenge, where you could give this rush. You could play uh, Grizzly Wings to give whatever you res rush with that. You could play Nailbone to just res multiple things and give them rush, like Necrophobia, Return from Darkness. There's just so many cards that you could utilize to res stuff to give them all rush, and the fact that uh, all of them are just very, very powerful, and depending on what megas you support them with, they also could be played for free, so it's like, oh wow, there's just a lot of extra power and pressure that could just come out of what Anubismon is doing just with him sitting on the board. On top of his own res ability, we have to also keep that in mind, just because, again, you could splash in some other colors to get some various other powerhouses, like you could splash Lucimon in to just to be able to utilize Lucimon. You could splash in Bushi Agumon, just because, again, you're playing him for his rush ability, but that's kind of a moot point when he's already going to have rush. But you also get some on-play abilities, so uh, if Purple starts playing with more on-play effects like they have with Labramon, then you get that as well. Then you also could uh, just get some more powerful rookies like Alekmon, where he's just very highly statted. And again, you just have so many different cards that this card could res. Like, you could even think about splashing in some blue and uh, pair this up with Vimon and Leopardmon. So that way he could res at Vmon with jamming, swing with the jamming right away, and then if you have Leopardmon, whatever he's going to be resing uh, is also going to have jamming, and then just all of the level 3s that you're also going to be planning on trying to res will all have jamming as well. So like, there's just a whole bunch of really powerful things that could come from just both of his abilities, whether it's his res ability, which is, again, 
more powerful than any of the other Digimon with res abilities, even though it is limited to level 3s. But again, it doesn't necessarily matter just because he could support so many more cards than all of the others could. And then on top of which, whatever you're going to be resing is going to have rush and just the extra aggression is just going to be super insane and super powerful. So I do think limiting him to one is going to help purple as a whole, just because they'll be able to want to try to play and experiment with different cards. So that way, every single deck isn't basically the exact same deck where it's just Anubismon X whatever Mega, and the whole point is just Resin Rush. Like, it just allows the purple to be able to do more things, and uh, I think that's overall more healthy for the color as a whole. And then the last card on the list is going to be Gaia Force. So I'd like to see Gaia Force limited just because it would allow other red options that are trying to act as removal a little bit more room to breathe because they have been trying to play around with more red removal options. It's just Gaia Force is just so good that it's kind of just been shutting all of them out from even seeing any remote play, even though they are still very, very good in their own rights. So you have cards like Shield of the Just, uh, where it deletes one that's 5,000, and if you have a Red Tamer, then it could delete up to 8,000, and then it has a lower play cost. You have something like Plasma Stake, which uh, could delete Digimon that are 1,300 or more for an even lower cost, and then you have something like Trident Revolver, where you could delete one that's six or less, and you get to play a Tamer card with four or less memory for free. With Trident Revolver, you are trying to play it more for the ability to play Tamers for free while removing a body on board, but I digress. The fact that all of these cards are still trying to act as removal, but none of them can quite reach it to Gaia Force levels of good is still very, very concerning. Even when they print cards that are super close to Gaia Force, like with the, the newly spoiled Grey Sword, where it deletes one with uh, 11,000, and then if you have an Omnimon, it could delete up to 15,000 instead. Like, that card is still really, really powerful. It's just still not Gaia Force uh, level good, and I think limiting Gaia Force will definitely allow more of these types of cards to be played, and I think that's going to be overall more healthy for deck building and uh, deck diversity. On top of which, uh, Gaia Force it does have this, like, meme stigma where it just is one of the best security cards because it kind of is, but regardless, uh, it's... It's just a very powerful card that I feel like uh, should be limited just so it could allow other cards a little bit more room to breathe. But this is all just my opinion on what I would like to see limited in the future. Obviously, we don't know exactly how the BT05 meta and forward is going to shape the game because maybe some of my concerns are just more hyper limited to the card pool that we have available to us. And maybe some of the other cards that they're getting in the future will make these cards not as problematic or issues as they currently are now. So that's always one thing to consider. But again, this is just my opinions and uh, how I feel about uh, some of the cards that uh, could be added to that list that won't just kill off uh, any respective colors or decks. So that's all I really have uh, for this video. As always, uh, feel free to tell me your thoughts uh, down in the comments below. And as always, uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more content, and I'll see you in the next video.